In this video, I'm gonna bust the five main myths about HMOs, houses of multiple occupation. Why is this important? Well, I believe HMOs are a fantastic strategy, but if you don't really understand HMOs, or if you're put off by some of these myths, you're gonna miss out on what is probably one of the best investment strategies, certainly one of the quickest ways of replacing your income. Take careful notes, because I think you're gonna find it really, really useful. So how do I know all this? Well, my name's Simon Zucci. I've been investing in property for over 25 years. I'm the founder of the Property Investors Network with over 50 meetings all over the country. It's the biggest network for property investors. I'm the author of Property Magic, the Amazon number one property bestseller. Now, I got my first HMO in 1998. I bought the property in 95. I was living there, rented out some rooms to my friends, and it was in the student area next to Birmingham University, known as Selly Oak. And I wanted to move slightly closer to my work at Cadbury's in Bourneville. So instead of selling my first house, I decided to keep that. I turned it into a student HMO for three students, and I moved into my new house closer to work. Now, I bought a few more properties. They were all single lets. And by 2001, I had enough income coming in to cover my living expenses. I hadn't entirely replaced my salary, but I had enough to leave my full-time job. And by 2003, I'd completely replaced my former salary at Cadbury's. Now, it was only in 2005, when I'd been investing for 10 years, I looked back over my property investing, and I realized that that one student HMO I had had created more income for me than any of my other properties, and it had been less hassle as well. Now, students are only one type of tenant in an HMO, but it worked incredibly well for me. And I thought, why on earth am I not doing more of that? And it just goes to show, even if someone's been investing for a while and you know, I'd replaced my income, I kind of thought I knew what I was talking about, we can always learn more if we have an open mind. In fact, the most successful people I know have very open minds, they recognize they don't know it all, they can always learn more. And that's a great reason for watching these kind of videos. So anyway, I looked back and I thought, this is great. So I started to buy more HMOs and more houses to convert into HMOs from 2005. And this has been the strategy that many of my students have used to very quickly replace their income. It took me eight years to replace mine using HMOs. Some of my students have done it in as little as five months. So what are the big five myths that might stop you from using this very powerful strategy? Well, the first one is that there is an oversupply of HMOs everywhere, and so you should not do HMOs. I hear that all the time. Now, I think it's actually a half truth. I think that yes, in many areas, there is an oversupply of HMOs. Does that mean you shouldn't do them? Well, it depends. If you're gonna have a very average HMO, which is what most landlords do, and if you wanna see what I mean, you could go onto a website called Spare Room. It's www.spareroom.co.uk. That's the main website where most landlords advertise their rooms for rent. You can type in your postcode and see what properties are available in your area right now for rent. And you'll see that the average HMO is very boring, very standard. They've got magnolia walls. They've got not such great, not matching furniture. And it's a pretty poor standard. I'm not talking about you doing HMOs like that. I'm talking about you doing really good high-end HMOs. They cost a little bit more to set up, but they're far more appealing to tenants. You get a higher rent and a much lower void period. So I believe there is an oversupply of standard stock. You don't wanna have an average HMO, but if you have a better than average HMO, you should be able to fill it much quicker than other people. You also, you don't need to compete on price. Everyone else has got the same stock. They just drop their price down. That's not such a good thing because you might attract the wrong kind of tenant. So just be aware of that. Um, things like student HMOs around universities is often a lot of accommodation because these new purpose-built blocks. Well, again, the purpose-built blocks, they're quite new and shiny and some students like them, but they're pretty expensive to live in. And also, you can't have parties and students wanna have parties, right? So actually, students prefer living in houses. They've gotta be very close to the university, they want that convenience. Um, and also they've got to be great condition. So it's the properties that are slightly further out, not such condition, they're the ones that remain empty. So you've got to, location is very important when you're doing your HMO investing. 
Myth number two is HMOs are a lot more work than single let properties. Well, I would agree that one HMO is more work than one single let property, but that's not really a fair comparison. That one HMO might make five times as much money as a single let property. So really you should compare one HMO with five single lets that might be dotted all around the town. Well, actually, you're not gonna do as much work for the one property as you are for the five. So yes, HMOs are more work than one single AST contract, but you need to make sure you're comparing like with like. And the reality is you don't need to do the work because you get so much extra cash flow from an HMO, you can afford to pay an agent to look after it for you and still make a healthy profit. So not only do you make money, but also you have time freedom as well. Myth number three, is that all properties need an HMO license. Now, this is not correct. And let me explain to you very briefly about how HMO licensing works. It's one of those areas that people don't know about. There's a lot of um, uh, confusion and that puts people off from actually investing in this particular type of property. So, if you have a property with five or more tenants, then you need to have an HMO license. Now, the way that works is you speak to the local council, they give you all the forms, uh, you need to submit the forms to the council, you make a payment, normally the license is valid for five years, and it can cost between 650 up to maybe 2,000 pounds for your license, it depends on council to council. And then you put an application in that gives a, a, a layout, a floor plan of the property, you need to have the required safety requirements in place, such as the fire doors and an interlink smoke alarm, and it might sound like a lot, but you get some very clear guidance from the council exactly what you need to do and what you can't do. Uh, you must have rooms that are big enough. They bought in minimum room sizes in October 2018 when they changed all the regulations. So if you have a single room, it needs to be at least 6.51 meters square and a double room needs to be at least 10.22. However, you must check with your local council because different councils interpret the guidelines in different ways. Some councils will say, well, you need a minimum of 10 square meters per room. Some councils say, if you've got just three tenants, you need to have a license as opposed to most that say five. So it's very important you check with your local council, but not every HMO needs a license. That's a really important point to understand. A caveat to that, I believe if you have an HMO, even if you don't need a license, you should adhere to the safety guidelines because you have a, an ethical, moral, and legal responsibility to make sure you look after the safety of your tenants. Myth number four is that all HMOs need planning permission. Again, that is not correct. And people often confuse licensing and planning. So forget about licensing, let's just talk about planning for a moment. Now, if you have a large HMO, by large, I mean seven or more people, it's not really seen as a normal residential property. In fact, it's got its own planning classification called sui generis. Sui generis is for a larger HMO, seven or more people. And you absolutely would need to get planning permission for that. In most parts of the country, in England, if you have a normal house, like a three bed, you can turn it into a up to six bed HMO, and they're different planning classes. A, a normal residential might be a C3, an HMO is a C4. You can change from C3 to C4 under what's called permitted development. Now, in some areas, they've introduced what's called Article 4. This is very important with relation to planning. If the councils introduce Article 4, what it means is they have withdrawn the permitted development rights. What that means for you is if you found a normal house in an Article 4 area and you wanted to turn it into an HMO, you would need to get planning permission to do that. Now, the reality is the council will probably automatically reject the planning permission application because the reason they've introduced Article 4 in the first place is because they don't want to have more HMOs. They think there are too many HMOs in the area. However, if it meets the planning criteria, and normally that's there are no other HMOs or, or there's no more than 10 or 20% HMOs within a certain radius, if it meets that criteria, you might well be able to appeal and get planning permission on the appeal. So don't think if it's an Article 4 error, you cannot do HMOs. You just need to check the concentration of HMOs in the area. The other thing you can do is actually in an Article 4 area, you can buy an existing HMO from a landlord, maybe they're retiring, and as long as 
it was an HMO before Article 4 came in, and as long as it's been used continuously as an HMO, you'd get what's called a certificate of lawfulness, and that means then you don't need to get planning permission. Now that's very important because when you buy an HMO, then obviously whoever you're getting a mortgage with will want to make sure if there's a license needed, the license is in place. If there's planning permission needed, they want to make sure that's in place as well. So it's really important to understand these things, but don't let them put you off investing in HMOs. And the fifth myth that I hear all the time is you need a lot of money to do HMOs. Well, it kind of depends. If you're buying a house and you want to completely strip it back to bricks and renovate it, um, that might cost you anywhere between 12 to 15,000 pounds per room. So let's say you had a five bed HMO you wanted to create, you're gonna take it back to bricks, um, you're gonna put in new plaster wall, all the new plumbing, electrics, etc. It will cost you probably between 60 and 75,000 pounds. If you go very high end, you might spend 20,000 pounds a room and it might cost you 100,000 pounds for a five bed HMO. So that's a lot of money and people think, I don't have that money to spend. Well, here's the thing. If you are buying a property and adding value to it, you might be able to refinance it and take some or all of that money out. So you can use the same money to do one property, add value, refinance, then do another one. It's what we call BRRR, buy, refurbish, refinance, and then rent. And it's a great way of building your portfolio quickly. However, even if you don't have any money, there are still some strategies with which you can do HMOs. For example, there's rent to rent HMO. This is where you find someone who's got a property, maybe they're an existing landlord, and maybe they're struggling to rent their property. Maybe they're, they're located elsewhere, they're a remote landlord, they've not had a very good letting agent who's not really knowing what to do. You can step in, you can fix the problem, you pay a guaranteed rent to the owner, and then you rent it out and you make sure you fill the property and you're making a margin on the difference between what you charge your tenants and what you pay to the landlord. Now, the best way to do this is buy an existing HMO that's already set up. It will adhere to all the requirements and so you don't have to spend a lot of money setting the property up. It can be a great strategy. The only problem is you've got to give the property back to the owner in typically three to five years and you lose that income stream. So very similar to rent to rent is another strategy called purchase lease option. This is where you do an HMO on a purchase lease option, similar to rent to rent HMO in that you get to rent the property from the owner, you don't own it, you pay them a fixed amount each month, you rent it out for more money, make a profit, but with a purchase lease option, you also have the right to buy the property in the future. What that means is you benefit from cash flow now and potential long-term equity growth. You don't have to buy it if you don't want to, but you've got the right to, or you can assign it onto someone else. So again, when you know what you're doing, you know how to find good deals, you don't necessarily have to do, um, use a lot of your own money to do HMOs. So I do hope this training has been useful for you. If you'd like to hit the like button, if you liked it, <clears throat> if you've got any questions, type the questions in, we'll come and try and answer those for you. And why don't you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. That means at least every week we've got at least one video, sometimes two, with great information about different property investing strategies to build your knowledge, build your confidence, and make you a more successful investor. So like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, and I look forward to sharing with you in the next video. I hope you've enjoyed that video. I've set up the next video I think you should watch having just seen this one. Click on the link now to watch that video. And also if you click on the link just below here, you can access our Property Investor Network meetings. Come to your very first meeting as my guest. Normally 20 pounds, but click on the link below, come to your first one just to check it out as my guest at no cost.